I think that comes from the fact that the original raid was planned by Donald Duncan, who was the air advisor to Admiral King. And the original plan was the Duluth raid should not be the Duluth raid, it was going to be a Navy raid borrowing Army aircraft. And Henry Arnold, Chief of Staff of the Army Air Force, was not going to have that. They weren't going to borrow his airplanes without his crews. And that's how it became the Duluth raid. But the idea of using submarines for rescue was mooted when it was being thought of as an all-Navy operation. That sank fairly quickly. Okay, the true child is the runway, should be used. But those information, only less than five people in China knew the truth. But nobody knew where the airplane came from. It was top secret, very successful top secret. The the raid was only the kickoff for them. They served either uh, in Burma, in North Africa, in, in England. Um, it was just the start. They're pretty amazing. So we're talking now about victory started here. It really did on the 18th of April, 1942. It's the story of the world's greatest aviator of his time. His name was James H. Doolittle. You've probably already heard that. And the mission from which he achieved further greatness for himself, but more particularly huge success symbolically and militarily for the war against Japan. December 7th, 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. President Roosevelt called his chiefs of staff together barely a week later and said, I want you to find a way to retaliate. I hate to tell you this, it wasn't my granddad's idea. It came from the Navy. What can I say? A submariner by the name of Admiral Lowe his airplane passing over a training field where there was a outline of an aircraft carrier on the field. As his shadow passed over that aircraft carrier, he wondered if an army-based, land-based bomber couldn't take off an aircraft carrier. He elevated it up the chain of command. Admiral King called General Arnold. General Arnold called my grandfather, said, Jimmy, can it be done? Not because he was a hot dog pilot, but because he was a scientist. Granddad came up with the idea of a B-25, exact same plane the Navy recommended. You know, the interesting thing about the, the Doolittle Raid, it really should be the Doolittle Halsey Raid. The interesting thing is, was the very first joint task force between the Army Air Corps and the Navy. Now, I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but I am going to tell you that this is a picture of my grandfather and he's sitting above the wing of his airplane, and it's on pieces on a mountainside in, in China. And I can tell you right now, he's at the lowest point he's ever been in his life right, right now. You see, this was his first combat mission. It was the first combat mission of every single one of his boys. And he thought it was a failure. He knew where his crew was, but at this point in time, he didn't know where anybody else was. And his crew chief, Paul Leonard, said to him, he said, you know, boss, they're going to make you a general. And granddad looked at him and he said, they're going to take my airplane away. And he, Paul goes, you know, boss, they're going to promote you to general. Or they're going to give you the Medal of Honor. And uh, granddad shook his head and kind of laughed and he said, I'll be lucky to get a paid vacation in Leavenworth. <laughs> and then Paul said to him, he said, you know, boss, they're going to give you another airplane. And when they do, I want to fly with you. My grandfather said that was the highest compliment he's ever received. You know, because his airplane's in pieces on a mountainside. But here's this kid that said, I believe in you. I want to fly with you. Well, as you heard today, the raid was, was a success.
lost their lives because they saved 80 Dulu Raiders. We never went to, went to Russia, so we won't give them credit. But to the Chinese people tonight, led by Mr. John Fu and Mr. Chu Chen, if you would stand and be recognized. He said that if we, we need to leave the earth a better place than we found it. We can do it by painting a picture, writing a poem, building a bridge, fighting injustice, combating uh, prejudice, and in a thousand other ways. But the purpose of our life is to leave this earth a better place than we found it. I look around this room. I look at people who have made this world a better place. The reason I tour, the reason I, I talk about my grandfather, is because his story is no more important than every single story in this room. And if we don't find a way to record those stories, our history is going to be lost. So the only payment I ever ask for any speech is that you all please find some way to record your story. And I'm not just talking to you boys, I'm talking to you girls too. All of these threads are the fabric that make this country the country that it is. It doesn't matter if you write a letter to your grandchildren and tell them what you did, or if you record through the Veterans History Project. There's an amazing project that your, your grandchildren can download off the internet for you and, and tape it and, and send it in, or if you do it in book form. But all I ask is that you please find a way to keep history alive. Thank you. I'm Ray Whitehead, a member of the BMD-154 that we fought in the war in 1942. Our uh, job was to photograph the islands in South Pacific. And I have here a story that I'll show you here. This represents the United States Marine Corps. The United States Marine Corps was noted for around the world. You see the band around the world here. We was an aviation outfit, and these wings here indicate the aviation. Our mascot in the Marine Corps was a bulldog, so the bulldog is showed right there. Our job was a photograph, so here's a camera in the bulldog's mouth. Now, V stands for fixed wings, M stands for marine, and D stands for photography. That's VMD-154, United States Marine Corps. 